I need that light on. To do what? Make a phone call? Yes, I do. I need to see what I'm doing. Alright, what's the fucking number? Okay, I'll give you the fucking number. Oh, how do I put it on speaker? Press speaker. Okay, hold on. Hello? Yeah, maybe. Can you turn the volume on? Hello? Hi. Yeah, how are you, Jocko? I'm okay, how are you? I'm doing fine. I'm in New York City. The, the Storm Nemo is coming through. Yeah, it's a blizzard. So, uh, hold on, I just gotta turn the music down a tad bit, and then we should be ready to roll on this interview. Okay. Okay. Um, the first question I have for you, and I hope it doesn't offend you, why did your friends used to call you Spock? Oh. Well, did they or didn't they? That doesn't offend me at all. Well, did they? Okay. Uh, that was specifically Johnny Cobb who called me that. Uh -huh. And because I kind of did look a little like Spock when I was a teenager. Uh -huh. Did you did you did you ever skate? Did you ever skate uh, Upland with Johnny Cobb? Because I heard he shredded there. <laughs> no, I never. I saw. I never went there with him, but I saw pictures of him skating there. Oh, okay. Um, and that's where he found out about punk rock was because he saw Sex Pistols written on Steve Alba's board. Oh, okay. Then he came back to Hawaii. That was like he brought punk rock to Hawaii because he saw Sex Pistols on Steve Alba's board. <laughs> oh. And was there was there many punkers living in Hawaii at the time? I'd say there were about twenty at the most. Mm. It was a very small, well, maybe 30. I've never seen the decline of Western civilization at the University of Hawaii. There are probably 30 people there. Oh. Did the Hawaiian people actually like it? I mean, they're pretty aggressive people. They might like that intense music and the, the dancing style. <laughs> I don't think the locals liked the punk rock at all. They didn't like <laughs> punk? No, they hated it. I mean, they're like, they already didn't like white people. Did they think it was like a Howley going crazy or what? Yeah, oh, exactly. <laughs> uh, also, can I just kind of jump around? Do you mind if I jump around quick on the interview? Jump around, man. Okay, jump around, House of Pain. <laughs> Everything's, exactly. Everything yeah, is related. Ev everything is related to music. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I want to ask you about like... Uh, um, skating at Del Mar, like with uh, Owen Nieder and. Uh, oh yeah, Owen was really. He, nobody talks about him anymore, but he was so good. Yeah. I saw him do the longest Marco board side ever. Where was it? In the keel. Oh yeah. I swear, you know, he he rolled. You know, you would like, you know, where everybody dropped in on the, well, the left side. Everybody like tail drop by that like platform. Yeah. Anyway, you know, you drop in, roll out on the other side, back side, and then roll back in. Yeah. And I swear this one night, it was just me and him. It was like this cold San Diego night. And he did, like, I swear to God, it was like 25 coping blocks, like the largest rock roll. <laughs> uh, I used to like, he, I used to like goofing. I used to like goofing off with him. He used to do street plants and get funny on the street. I liked it. It was fun. He wasn't really yeah. serious, but he would, he would just, it was fun, you know, because he, when he'd do street skating, he'd be street skating in his Dr. Martens. <laughs> what about, yeah, like what about Billy Ruff? You got anything good to say about him? He used to be a Del Mar local. Yeah, he's another one that's kind of forgotten, you know, I think maybe it was because he drove a Porsche, people didn't like him or something. Oh, he was the best, dude. I love Billy Ruff. I liked that one ad with him at the Del Mar horse track and the 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 horse racing. Oh, you know the, he was standing on, he was yeah, standing on the track. 
contract and the board is like in the air. Yeah, yeah, because at the time Rodney Marlin was really popular for inventing the ollie on the flat ground, and then freestyling was considered not cool but okay. And uh, he's tossing a freestyle board up in the air, and he's on the race course, and the race course had just been, uh, you know, been, uh, yeah, it just, yeah, it had just been groomed. And he's like standing out there. He's got leather Nikes on, white on white, uh, five hundred one denim jeans, and a uh, and an Izod shirt. He looks so cool. I love that dude. Yeah, no, he was. I was kind of friends with him. He was, you know, he was sort of preppy. Yeah, he was preppy. I like that. And he drove the Porsche, and I he went out with a friend of mine too. It was, it was, he was, he was amazingly good. Good, he invented the unit. Yeah. Um, and he was, I mean. Blasted. He was so good, and he went fast. You know, he like the small, fast guy. Yeah, <laughs> I liked his. I liked his. Really li- his his lean airs were sick. Billy Ruff's lean airs were cool, and he could stall inverts pretty long. Oh yeah. But he didn't. He didn't even tweak on his inverts. His inverts were all just normal. But on his backside, his boy, he'd bone that tail out so good. Yeah, Dave Swift. Dave Swift was another San or another San Diego skater there at Del Mar, and the other guy was yeah. Ken Park. And uh, there was a good scene there, man. There was a really good scene. There was okay, Dave Swift, Ken Clare, Ken Clare, Ken Clare. Steve Clare. Yeah, he was rad. Uh, oh my god, incredible. Um, yeah, everybody was. No, I mean there was nowhere else. <laughs> Jason nice. Jesse, man, he destroyed that park. What about Tony Hawk? Were you there when Tony Hawk jumped that fence? That was a really cool picture that uh, I know. I never Britain saw him took. Do that. You never saw him do that? I, mean, I, I saw Tony all the time. I never saw him even the, when he took from the half pipe to the fence. Yep. I never saw him. But he was there. All those guys were there. Bruno Herzog, he was another Del Mar local. He was there. Uh, did Henry uh, Simpson used to date his sister? Reese Simpson used to date that guy Bruno's sister, I think. Oh, that's right, that's right. Bruno's the dude with the, he has one funny eyeball, right? <laughs> yeah, he's cool, I like that dude. I used to, I remember skating the freestyle area when they put the parking blocks on top, and he used to do the longest smith grinds across the parking yeah, blocks. Bruno was good. Yeah, I used to drop it. Oh, dude! I seen him skate on some half pipes, like at the at Skilly's in Westminster. I seen him do the highest fakey thrusters. I was like, oh my god! Yeah, there was a ton of people. I mean, it's Skilly. He was, you know, he skated all the time. I mean, everybody was there. All the pros, you know, and the Chris and everybody that was in the contest, they had to be there. Yeah. You know who else did? You know who else did long board? You know who else did long board slides in that pool was uh, Steve Stedham. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot about Stegu. But Stegu's Stegu's uh, Stegu's board slides and the bowls they kind of suck because he got too much on the deck, you know. Yeah, too Stedham. But he was pretty. You know, he was, his airs were weird and jerky. Like, you know what I mean? Like his airs, like. Yeah, I loved his backside bonus. His frontside bonuses were rad too. Yeah, yeah. No, there are all kinds of. There's all these other guys that, like, what, uh, God, what, there's a guy who skated for Oakland Weaver. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a guy who skated for Oakland Weaver. What about, like, you got any stories, like, in the arcades or, like, about people playing games or fucking around, around <laughs> Del Mar? Yeah, I mean, I remember, like, one thing I don't know why, well, the Denny's, everybody went to the Denny's. Yeah, right by the AMPM? Yeah, right, right, right on the, by the on ramp to the highway. That was like the big hangout spot, and I feel, I still feel bad sometimes for the waitresses because they had to put up with these, like, obnoxious skater hijinks, you know? Do you um, think skaters are starting to get a better reputation nowadays? Bleached blonde hair that was like straw? Well, it was like bleached. 
mm-hmm. so much that my hair was like straw. And we were at Denny's, and I think it was Dave Swift, but he like he sort of set my hair on fire a little bit. Um, <laughs> um, and I caused quite a commotion. But uh, the Denny's, I don't know if people were know what Del Mar the Arcane. I don't remember like. Oh, Todd Swank, he was, like, there every day. Uh, Swank was cool. He's one of the first dudes to, like, put out those skate zines, wasn't he? Yeah, Swank was a great scene. He was there, Chip Morton. People were hanging out in those... Remember they had those, like, trampoline basketball things? Yeah. Yeah, and they were hanging out in those trampoline basketball things. Yeah. And I think people, like, lived in there. Oh, you know who was, who were there? Who were the guys who started to slip? Um, who started what? I mean, I don't know. I remember Lempy's was popular around there. Well, he and he did it this guy Smeg. They were like these two English guys who like... Oh, I know Smeg. Yeah. Anyway, they were there. You know, there are all these like wild cats that I really didn't like them, but they were there. Uh, everybody was around. Anyway, who else? I remember Brad Dorfman in the, in the RV. <laughs> yeah, they rented that big RV. That's right when I first got on Vision. I thought it was pretty I know, cool. I, just, I remember the first time I saw Dorfman, I was really shocked because I just had no idea that he looked like such a... A Hesher? A Hessian? <laughs> no, like a cheesy, like, kind of business man, you know? And I just remember seeing him, and I was like, oh my God, like, that's... I don't know, that was, like, shocking. Yeah, but the guy was, he was very smart with what he did, you know what I mean? Like, when he made those, ani- oh, yeah. when he made those animal print boards, everybody wanted them. Oh, no, he was totally smart. I mean, I just, it was weird to me, like, I didn't have any idea, like, to do. If Scape, if Scape, let me just say one, can I just say one thing? Sure. If skateboarding was around when he was a kid, instead of playing the yo-yo, he would have been riding a skateboard, because it was really funny. <laughs> He he showed me one time he had all these fucking tricks on the yo-yo. So when he was like a little boy, it was probably like the the you know the fi- I don't know the fifties or something like when Dorfman was a kid. So he picked yeah. up the yo-yo as a kid and he'd play that shit and learn all the fucking tricks, just like all these kids. Like the they're not into it to feel like the feeling. They're not into to to like cruise or to carve. They just want to do difficult tricks, just like the yo-yos. Everybody that had a yo-yo, they wanted to do the most difficult trick with their yo-yo. <laughs> No, it's kind of trippy. Your so if he if they had skateboarding when Dorfman was a kid, I bet the dude would have been a yo-yo f- or a fucking tech master. He would have been a tech master. I'm not. I'm not trying to defend him though. I'm not trying to defend him. I'm just saying. That's okay. I mean, yeah, he did vision was like did very well for himself. To put it mildly, did really well. Yeah. And yeah, I had your boy. Oh, you did. Oh, don't embarrass yourself. Don't lie. You never had it. <laughs> oh, oh, well, Mondo did those airbrush graphics that were so rad. Yeah, those are, those are cool. I want to get my hands on one of those boards, you know, the fluorescent with the black and white. Yeah, yeah. Those, I, that, I had a couple of those. They were, like, pink. They were, like, the boards that Eddie Radicky wrote. Do you have any? Uh, What was it like when you come when you came to New York, like when Max Fish before it became like the cool spot? When it was, I don't know, like when you first came to New York. Do you have any stories about that time? I mean, I the readers might be interested in that since everybody likes to go there now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was cool. It was a place where it was less self-consciously cool. It was what? It was less self-consciously. I mean, now, you know, everybody knows about Max Fish and all the skaters hang out there. At that time, it had only been open, I lived there in 91, it had only been open for a year and a half. And it was, like, scary to go down there because there was nothing below Houston. It was the old, you'd, like, literally almost, like, run from Houston Street to the Max Fish. <laughs> and it was, like, this very bohemian artist drug scene which 
I just took it for granted. Like, I'm in New York, and this is what it's like. I mean, I think people look back like, oh, it's so cool. But it was always like, it always had like a special feeling because it'd be, like, I remember like Jeff Pang, Jefferson Pang, who, by the way, one of the most amazing street skaters, um, him and like Peter Hun and Ivan Pratt, like, they would hang out there. But then, you know, like Taylor Mead. Jim Jarmish, I remember talking to Jim Jarmish there, and, you know, all these people from the band, it was a really weird mix, but I don't That's a crazy know. combination, Jeff Pang, Ivan Perez, and uh, Jim Jarmusch. And Jim Jarmusch, and he doesn't, and they to each other, you know what I mean, it was like... The what about the what about the options on the women? Was there lots of hot art, artistic women at, there at the time? Well, there were a lot of hot, there were a lot of options, but my girlfriend was well, when she had been my girlfriend was the bartender, one of the bartenders. Well, I didn't know she was Gloria, a bartender then. Yeah, Gloria was a bartender there for like four years. Wow. So I would hang out there, but it was always kind of weird because like there were these hot girls. I'm like, why are we broken up? But I still feel kind of weird. <laughs> and the other thing is, like, it was kind of crazy. You know, I mean, all these funny, little, I don't know, funny, but it was, there was so much drug taking going on. But I was kind of naive. Like, I just drank a lot. I didn't get how much heroin was being done. And people were dying and of OD. And I know, like, my favorite story, it's probably not really true, but it's a great story, is, like, some dude was in there, and his girlfriend was talking to some other guy, and the guy got bad, and they had words, and the boyfriend left. And then, like, after that, he, co- he comes back, and he comes to the door, and he pulls out a gun. <laughs> and, like, everybody's like, oh, shit, like, you know, he pulls out the gun. And, and Harry, you know, the bartender Harry? Yeah. And, and Alan, the other bartender chase this guy out of Max Fish up the street to Houston and then he runs up to Houston and he's holding the gun in one hand and a taxi drives by and he like waves his hand with the gun in hand at the taxi. <laughs> Did the taxi stop or run him over? <laughs> oh, no, excuse me. Anyway, the taxi stops and he jumps in the cab and drives off. Oh, that's a good story. <laughs> I like it. And I mean, I don't know, it, actually, it, it, it was felt more, it still has that feeling, but it, it was really like what was left of the type, or part of what was left of the sort of cool downtown scene. But a lot of those people in the early 90s there was this weird hole because all these people died of AIDS or like drug, you know, overdoses. Like, it was kind of like a strange time because a lot of, you know, the art scene had been really huge until 1987, and then it collapsed, and it ate, you know, people dying. So it felt kind of like a strange vacuum time, you know? Yeah. I don't know, it's hard to, if I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, that's good. Why don't we just end this interview about Max Fish? I think that's good. So we went from Del Mar, talked about skating, well, I'll, talked I'll, about I'll Max Fish, and like, this, unless there's something you want to talk about. No, no, that's just weird. Thing. Like, when I first went there, I totally... I, I moved to New York and I had this Matt Hensley board <laughs> and the going trucks, if you can believe that. And, you know, I hadn't looked at a skateboard magazine or anything and, you know, boards were getting small and anything, but I, I remember going in there and somebody, it might have been Aaron Grove, was actually kind of made, I mean, he was nice about it, but kind of made his joke like, oh, that's a pretty big board you got there. <laughs> so it was like a mad envy, like 10 by 30 board. Yeah. And anyway, I didn't, you know, skating was going from like big board, but I still had this big board, but it was like all of a sudden I was like this whole kind of out of it, dude, with this big fat skateboard. <laughs> well, Aaron Rose isn't that much younger than you. He's just always hip and up on what's happening right yeah, away. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you a funny thing. It's like, so I was sort of like also. And this is kind of like when I saw you in Washington Square Park and you're riding the water ski board and you've been living in New York. In New York? <laughs> okay. Have you been living in France or something? Oh, yeah, I lived in Lyon for a while, so my, maybe I came back to New York after Lyon. I don't know. What kind of board was I yeah. riding? You were like, oh, this guy's like water ski board. 
Oh, that was fun. I remember that guy. He used to always be around in New York, driving around on the board. Yeah, I have a picture of you riding that board. Oh, that's cool. You should email it to me. I'd like to see it. Talk about being out of step real quick, Jocko. That guy was really funny. I like that guy. He used to be, He, I think he lived like somewhere on the Lower East Side, but I would always see him around by Washington Square Park. He'd always like mingle with the college students there from NYU, and he'd have that board with the fucking water skin. I'd be like, where the hell is he going? He had a dog, too, that he used to always like, he, the dog wouldn't pull him because the dog was kind of like older, but he would always have his dog with him. His dog would always like trail with him. Do you remember him or not? I, I don't remember the guy. I just remember from my heart. It's funny. But he was a Latin dude. He was like a Latin dude. It's still, I didn't go to Washington Square Park much. Yeah. It was sort of like, uh, you know, I lived on the Lower East Side. I worked in, I don't know, the Washington Square Park was like right in like Eastern Square. And I didn't go there much, but this one day I went there, and that's when I saw you riding around on this water skateboard. And I took this photo. I wish I could. I, I have a slide of it, but it's in my store space in Brooklyn. Oh, that's true. Like, you're like cruising on this water skateboard. But anyway, what I want to tell you is like how this is a funny thing. It's like, so you know, I had like plenty of skating, and in a way, when I got to New York, and this is why I brought up like you being at home, is like I kind of needed a break from skating. And I didn't really talk about it. I didn't tell anybody. You know, when I meet people, I wouldn't talk about skating at all. And it wasn't, and skating was not like a cool thing then either. Well, not that that matters, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I kind of needed to take a break from skateboarding. And I was like, you know, art, blah, 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 music and literature. So I never talked about skating. But what happened was, and this is like funny because it brings us back to the beginning, Johnny Cobb had given me two really nice pipeline t shirts. Upland pipeline t shirts. Yeah, he was a local there for a little while. Yeah, and you know, like, with the logo on the arm, with, you know, the guy in the pipe? Yeah. Really nice. One was blue, one was red. And, you know, they had this really nice, thick cotton. Mm -hmm. Like, they were really good t-shirts. Anyway, I had these two shirts, but they were, I had worn them, but, you know, I got a little bigger when I was, like, 22. Like, they were a little too small, so I gave them to Gloria. Yeah. Gloria Park, the bartender, and she wore them. And at work at Max Pitch. And then I remember somebody was like talking to her, and they were, and she's like, Yeah, all these people keep asking where I got this shirt. <laughs> and people were freaking out over this pipeline shirt. Right? Yeah. And that's, that's like the first time I talked about skating in New York. It's like somebody's like, No way, where'd you get that? How do you have this pipeline? And I was like, Yeah, that's my, I gave that shirt to Gloria. You know, I got it from this guy, Jack Cobb. <laughs> Well, now that like, style is like totally popular, you know, to wear shirts from like the old days. Like, I mean, everybody like, know, like Terry Richardson, he just goes on eBay and looks for like old punker shirts and then wears yeah, them. No comment Yeah. Yeah. Well, for sure, I'd like to lay some pipeline on her, baby, for sure. I'm just kidding. I'm just playing. Okay. What about uh? What about uh? Do you know anything about like uh? I don't know, like about I don't know anything that you think that the readers from Hawk would want to know about. I mean, it's like a skateboard cultural type magazine. I know. Uh, I don't know what they would want to know. <laughs> uh, I just watched some uh, like an hour of videos of Tom Verholsky. <laughs> the East Coast <laughs> Devil, the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil is like really, really good and still is. Yeah. You don't skate anymore? Well, I mean, I'm living, I'm living in the mountains. There's no, I'm skiing every day. Skiing? 
I tripped out when you sent me the one photo of you doing the hand plant. I didn't think it was you. I was like, man, he's still doing hand plants at his age. Fuck. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Of course he can do a hand plant. Yeah, I don't know what the readers are talking about. That's like, I don't know what he's talking about. Anyway, right now, I'm just like aggressively asking him to come up to King every day. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll come up there and do a surprise visit and hit the slopes with you. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm, gonna, I'm working on some wall rides on my skis. You're in Colorado or where? No, no, no. Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe? Okay, dude. Yeah. Don't be surprised if I knock on your door. Okay. Email me, email me your address. Okay. And the, and the airport. <laughs> the name of the airport where I should go to. You, you fly to Reno. Fly to Reno? Get a rental car and then drive there. That's how it works. Dude, I, you know what I do like about uh, Lake Tahoe is they got that uh, Julius Caesar's Casino. That's a pretty cool spot. They got good stationary paper there. Which oh, that's Corsica, man! I love that fucking park. It's so good. It's right on the beach, and there's no one ever skating there. It's just really vacant all the time. A couple of times there's yeah. been kids on their mountain bikes, but it's lots of fun. Yeah, watching that kind of thing, watching. Dude, you can't. You don't have to quit skating to get away from it. You just have to find dope spots on no off the wall places. I know, I know. I'm not quitting skating. You better not, dude. I'm gonna tan your hide. Hey, who's older, me or you? Who's older? Yeah. I was born May 20th, 1967. Oh, 67? You're one year older than me. I'm... Shit. I'm a year older than me. You're a year older than me. I can't believe that's it. I used to think that you were so much older than me when I used to see you around. Oh, my God. Well, I seen you at Del Mar a lot. It's like I seen you at the Denny's there when... Not the time when Swift set your hair on fire, but I seen you... And then he's chilling with all those guys. Yeah, that was a welcome. Yeah. Okay, Jocko, thanks for doing the interview. I had a fun time doing the interview. How long has it been for? I'll be here for a little while. I'll probably be here for a while now since I'm trying I'm trying to take care of some stuff here. And I think I'll, I might be moving back here. I have to find a, a loft or a place to live. Oh, really? Yeah. So you should come back to New York. We'll hang out and be buddies. Why? The drugs are too tempting or the women? <laughs> the drugs are too tempting and it's too expensive. Okay. Hey, but you got to remember, money does grow on trees. No, it doesn't. It's full of blind people with a lot of money. By the way, did you see this interview with Jim Warrod in this magazine, The Park Penta? No, I don't read, I don't read uh, Apartmento. Anyway, it talks about you because he says how it's pictures of that apartment and he's like, Arkansas, like he's a interesting person that left New York. That left New York? Yeah, like you left, me too, you left. I'm not saying I'm interested, you know. Mm. The point being that like New York is hard, like a lot of people who were attracted to New York can't really live there anymore. No that. way, it's not that. I, I always travel, like I like to be in, in Europe because I can go like, you know, like go to Italy, go to London, go to, you know, wherever. I wanted to go up to Germany to to visit with the artist uh, Boslitz, but it just never happened. But, yeah, I like Europe a lot, but I like New York, but I always come back to New York. My little boy lives here, so I'm always going to be coming yeah, here. No matter where I live, I'll be here, so long as his mother lives here. But she was speaking about moving to Los Angeles, but I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't really give a shit where I am. You know, I like to have fun wherever I go. <laughs> Well, maybe we can take a trip to Corsica together, me and you, and whatever, if you want to. It would be fun to go there. It's a really fun skate park. There's no bowls or no corners to carve. That's okay. That's okay. I love that video. It really did remind me of my girl, Boy, Mustard You know which park you would love, because it's really, really small, but it's got the coolest little corners. You can carve it, and it's got a little bump in the middle. It's in Makatu, New Zealand, man. Oh, that park is the best. I love it. If I got some photos of it or some video footage, I'll mail it to you by email and you can check it out. It's a fun park. 
the Hamilton Bowl is good. I mean, you can do inverts in there and high airs and stuff. Have you ever heard of the Hamilton Bowl in New Zealand? Yeah, that dude, Michael Spittlehouse, man, he destroys that spot. Michael who? Spittlehouse. Really? He's, he, yeah, he's really good. Okay, we'll end it on that. Thanks, Jocko. Excellent talking to you, Mark. Have a good day, all right? Okay, you too. Bye.